We're back at it again with the hard mode 2. This is my favorite event by far. Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about hard mode shard farming version 2, I guess, since we're doing this again. This may sound like a repeat, but every time we get to the hard mode 2 or the normal 2, you know, like these, these, we have circumstances that change. Sometimes you may hit max cap on things or sometimes like, you know, UE is coming out, which it isn't, by the way, don't be scared yet. And also we learn a lot of things like how last time I went really, really, broke. All right, without further ado, let's just jump into it and let's start with Cockroach. So Cockroach shards are really valuable and invaluable, right? So at the very least, everybody should have her at three stars. If you already have her at three stars, then the next possible step is for her to go to four star. The reason for a four star Cockroach is so that you can use like the Mitski comp or the Cockroach Mitski, uh, Susana, that kind of comp in clan battle versus Wyvern. And you can Cockroach swap into tanking Wyvern. Cockroach at three stars, rank seven, six items. She is not enough to actually tank the Wyvern. The reason why you leave her at 7-6 is because she has the most TP gain at that time. However, if you bump her up to 4 stars, she can actually serve as the tank for that Wyvern. I'm pretty sure for the next few CBs, we will not be getting the phase 3, so I think it is a safe investment. However, you do need to plan out with the rest of your clan as to whether you should take the Kokoro 4 or not. Because for the most part, Kokoro 4 might break the rest of your comps, especially for like B5 or like B4. Kurumi aka Walnut is a very interesting one because a lot of people are farming her in anticipation of the unique equipment. The reason is because she becomes a superstar in arena. However, in my opinion, I would estimate unique equipment is about maybe like six months away. And the same kind of reasoning goes for Aoi. So these two are going to be superstars in arena, but like at this point, I don't think it's worth farming them. I know a lot of people in the top 10, top 25 guilds are pretty crazy. Like they're going to farm every single node and they're even going to refresh some of them. But for the general population and me even, I'm not going to be touching these two. As for today, these two don't fit in the meta right now. So I would not farm these guys. When hard mode two comes next, we are one month closer to UE. So the, you know, like there is a possibility that I may recommend farming them. If you've actually farmed out everything else, there is no harm in farming these guys, but otherwise these guys are a skip. Next, we've got Ray, who I am farming vigorously. So Ray, she's got two nodes now and she gets really strong at five stars, plus her UE. At five stars, she's kind of just okay. Personally, I'm just pre-farming her as like kind of a flex backup unit for my CB teams, but at this point, I don't, I don't think I even used Ray a single time last CB. You could opt to skip her. She's kind of actually in the same boat as the other two. I did use her in CB2, but I didn't use her in CB3. I don't anticipate that I'll be using her in CB4 and beyond until her UE comes out. Lower priority, but definitely could consider. Yui is another one that everyone should have at least at three stars. However, going beyond that, I'm not a big fan of. Yui performs exceptionally well at three stars already. Like you could argue you could be prepping for like a five star UE or like six star or like Luna Tower. For those kinds of reasons, you could definitely do it, but like she's lower priority for me, especially when there are so many other units to farm. Like, uh, I don't know, like splitting off stamina for this. I have estimated like I'm going to be sinking about like 900 stamina already. Saren I'm not farming because I've got her at four stars and like about 40 or 50 shards. So that's about the point that you need to be at before you stop farming Saren. The reason why I stopped at four stars and about 40 shards is because you will actually be getting her shards in an upcoming event in the summer event. The event will give approximately like 100 shards and you know like Saren 5 is not really a priority. As we all know Saren is used for the TP juicing and she's not really used for her damage. Even her UB is kind of lackluster and it's for these reasons that she's very comfortable at four stars and 50 shards. As for her UE, if you should pre-farm for her UE, like mm, I'd say no, because like her UE is probably among one of the ones that like don't do anything for a character. For example, Ray's UE gives her like defense shredding. However, Saren's makes her do more damage when she's at lower health, which doesn't really help us. Next, we've got Pekrin and I'm just going for that five-star Pekrin because I'm just a mad lad, you know. Pekrin and Kurumi from before, they're actually among the first few characters to get their UEs. However, again, six months away, I'm not really preparing for that. I just want another five-star tank, to be honest. Everyone should have her at three stars at least, and you could go for five stars if you're going a little mad. Lima, everyone should have at least three stars. Actually, you know, like almost all of these characters, except for the ones that you don't really use, they should be at least three stars. If you don't have anyone at three stars, that already takes priority like over all of this. With that being said, back to Lima. Lima's just a very strong physical tank. I personally tend to like really value tanks, especially in arena. I think there is a clan battle strategy for one of the bosses that features a three-star Lima, but I'm not looking too much into it. But yeah, if you're running a Ninon comp or a Reno comp, or if you're running that freaking Kyoka comp where like you have the Kyoka at the very far back with a Lima at the very far front, like Lima three star for sure. I'm going for five stars just because I want tanks. Mimi for you should be quite close to five stars actually, especially since we had that event. If she's not already five stars, you'll probably be able to get her to five stars after this two times event. I think she's just a very solid character. With her UE, she becomes top tier in arena. However, right now she is sometimes featured in clan battle comps. You could definitely use her. And I think there is one arena comp that I use her in to 
beat like the Tamaki and Hatsune Tamaki stole. Okoro we've already been through, so Misaki. Misaki is an interesting one. She's another one of the ones that you could use. A lot of the top tier guilds, well, more than the crazy people. I'm not going to say top tier guilds. I'm going to say crazy people. A lot of the crazy people are going for like the Misaki fives, and I think they've just run out of stuff to do. Misaki, as we all know, is just unfortunately an underperformer, so she would be lower priority. Obviously, if you like her, you freaking farm her. You do, my doggy. Next, we have Ninon, which I am vigorously farming because I still do not have Ninon. Ninon is a powerhouse in Arena. She is not used in clan battle at all. I'm pretty sure not to this day in JP. But Ninon, Hatsune, Tamaki, like these are like must-haves for PvP. For that reason, I'm farming her. But if you're a clan battle focused and you don't care about Arena, you could actually skip this. Ninon will pretty much never see clan battle usage. Next, we've got Kurumi. We've already been through her. And we've got Mifuyu next. I know a mad lad in my clan who's got, I think, a five-star Mifuyu. Mifuyu is a very interesting character. She doesn't pop up too often in clan battle, but I actually see her sometimes in Arena. She's actually just got like this massive single target nuke and stun. Like, you know, everything on paper makes her seem like she's actually quite a good character. Honestly, I'm not sure why she's not in meta. I think, like, there are just, like, better comps to run. She's kind of in, like, the same situation as Mimi. She's, like, solid, but there are better characters. Shiori, I'm farming because, like, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get to five stars, but, like, I'm already halfway there, I think. And it's just, like, Shiori is just, oh my god, this node is, like, the death of me. But yeah, Shiori, if you've been playing since, like, launch or whatever, you should have her at least at, like, four stars. You could consider giving up on her until her next node shows up but like i'll just keep farming her obviously if you have other characters that are closer to the next star upgrade and you don't have enough stamina like you're not willing to refresh six times or something then i think she already goes down but only after you've gotten her at her like three or four star breakpoint yui we've already been through my hero is another meme one so it's uh, i don't know like a lot of these characters they don't show up too often but when they show up like they really really show up i do like seeing all of these meme builds but unfortunately i'm a meta slave and so i can't like recommend my hero that being said i have gotten my ass slapped by Mahiru and it's gotten real sus so like you know it's definitely on the table for me it's a lower priority but again if you use her three stars at least Shizuru is another interesting one she's not strictly required for like clan battle nor arena she is a very good defense against Reno and Ninon Com, and also I think somebody tried to use her in the next CB however using Shizuru tends to mean that you're going to be dropping damage for, for CB that is and so for that reason she's not like I'm not going for her because of CB reasons I'm going for her because I don't have her and I like her. That's it. I personally think that if you're a CB player, she's like a no-no, but if you're an arena player, she's probably like a mid-priority. We've got Pekka and again, I'm going to farm the heck out of her. And next we've got Erika and Shinobu. Actually, very interesting characters. I actually used Erika every day last CB in one of my comps. It was actually a really, really weird comp. So the boss I was fighting was the Ogre, which was boss 4, and the comp was, I believe, I think it was like Makoto, Boro, Yukari, Erika, and two archers, which was Arisa and Shinobu. Yori or Susan, I can't remember which one. But the idea was, was that Ogre targeted like it split damage, right? It would like throw rocks at one character and then it would slam the other and then it would normal attack the front character, right? The idea there was that Eriko took some damage, Susan took some damage and Makoto took some damage. However, if your Eriko or Susan were different stars, then I think like your Eriko would just straight up die or your Susan. I can't remember which one, but like you need to keep your Eriko and Susan at the same stars. With well, that being said though, Eriko was doing pretty massive damage damage even as a standalone unit. Obviously compared to the archers it wasn't as much but she was she was very important for me. Also with UE Erika becomes one of the best attacking characters and so I guess you could say you can pre-farm for her. Between like her versus Rei versus Mimi or whatever I think Erika does the most right now. As for Shinobu everybody should have her at least at three stars but I don't think anybody should go over that unless again you're going to be farming every freaking node. Shinobu is very important when UE comes out but again six months away. She gets like a crit buff and an attack buff which is pretty nutty considering I don't think we actually have any crit buffs in the game right now or like party crit buffs but yeah to summarize three stars and probably stop farming her after that we've already been through Rei. yuki is another interesting one i would say three stars and just keep it at that same as shinobu she kind of is like the same as shinobu you know they're like kind of supports three star power spike and stop there akino is another interesting one again i don't know if you guys used her last cb but like for cb2 at least she was a real real helper in keeping my front line alive as well as providing additional dps so it's not like i was just swapping out like one of my dps's for like a dedicated healer. Akino, I think even with UE does not get that good. I think you got to wait till six stars, which is probably like two to three years away. For me, I wanted to get her just to have that extra option in clan battle. However, for the most part, if you're following meta, like I think Akino can be safely skipped. But if you like her, you should farm her. So we've got Aoi next, who we've already been through. Mimi, we've already been through as well. And Saren, who we've also been through actually. So next, Misaki, Mifuyu, Ninon. Wait, we've been through all of these as well. So how about next? And we've been
been through all of these characters as well. So that actually kind of concludes this video, doesn't it? The last thing that I'm going to talk about that I probably should have led with is the concept of, I guess, refreshing. So what should you really refresh? And last time I refreshed nodes a couple of times and I was like, bro, I'm getting so broke. For me personally, who's getting more and more casual, it's just not worth it. It's, it's not worth it to refresh the nodes themselves, especially because if you want to consume those attempts on the nodes, you also have to refresh stamina. So my opinion is that if you are going to refresh, you will refresh stamina and stamina only. If you're going to be refreshing nodes, this video is probably already useless to you. You already know what you're doing. But as for me, like I said, I calculated that I'm about to spend about like 900 stamina a day. So I just need to refresh to make sure that I make that amount. I'm not one of those crazy guys that are going for like Aoi, Mifuyu, Misaki, Kurumi, and all those other dudes. Even despite all of that, without refreshing nodes themselves, I'm going to be needing about 900 stamina. So I think I'll be refreshing about like three, maybe six times a day, but probably going to be three. For me personally, I just don't think the others are worth it, especially not right now for me. However, if you're one of those people that are reluctant to refresh, now is the time to refresh, if not like before. The two times to really refresh, even, even times six, to be honest, is normal times two and hard mode times two. Normal times two just gets you so much equipment and hard mode times two, it just accelerates your progress by like two to four times, depending on how lucky you are. Last time, I also talked about the concept of rigging nodes. So you can check back on my last video to actually see how that works. However, I've already forgotten to do this. As you can see, all of my nodes are already cleared, the ones that I want anyway. But yeah, I think that's the well true ending because now I have nothing left to talk about. Remember guys, the reason you refresh is to progress and the reason you progress is to hold higher ranks or get higher clan battle ranks. If you're able to hold higher arena ranks or hold higher a clan battle ranks, then you're going to be getting more gem income. All right, let's move on to a secret message with a secret question. H2 is my favorite event. If you guys could drop that secret message down in comments below, I would really appreciate it. But also let me know what you guys are actually farming. If you guys think some of my logic is wrong, let me know because like, you know, I like to be educated. I don't ever claim to know everything. A lot of you guys always correct me in the comments and you know, this is no exception. So yeah, let me know what you think. Yo, the free rolls are coming next reset as well. Get hype, let's go. All right, with that being said, if this video has helped you in any way, shape or form, or you found it mildly entertaining, consider liking it or commenting or subbing or uh, pinning it. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.